I want to begin by once again expressing personal gratitude and heartfelt thanks to you, the people of Dominica, for the overwhelming mandate you gave to the Dominican Labour Party in the general elections of December 18, 2009. It is clear to all that you listened to what we said from the platform about taking Dominica to the next level. It is also clear that what was said connected with your dreams and aspirations for yourself, your families, and your communities. I can assure you that the two women and the 16 men of the Dominican Labour Party you elected to represent you in the parliament are carrying out that responsibility with seriousness and professionalism. Each of them brings a strong sense of duty to the portfolios they have been given. I feel honored to be sitting in the cabinet with such a group of talented and committed persons. I am here specifically to report to you on the status of implementation of some specific measures which I promised would have been introduced within the first 100 days of the new Labour government. These measures were contained in a speech I delivered to all Dominicans at a rally at the Lapley, at Lapley on Sunday, December 13, 2009. The measures were intended primarily to tackle cost of living issues and increase job opportunities, mindful that these were the issues that you identified as being most important to you. Many of the promises I made required the approval of the cabinet before action could be taken to bring them into effect. Since the cabinet was sworn in on January 4th, then the clock started ticking towards the days, the 100 days on that day. According to my calculation, 100 days from January 4th takes us to April 14th, 2010. I hope this clears up all misunderstanding on this matter. Specifically, the measures sought to, one, lessen or remove the impact of the cost of living on the average citizen. Two, create an, an employment agency. Three, fix the rate of pay so that all full-time government employees receive no less than $1,000 per month. Four, create 150 positions for temporary teachers and 50 new graduate teacher positions. Five, create 100 new positions for nurses. Six, strengthen the capacity of the police force to combat crime, violence, and antisocial, antisocial behavior. I will now report on each of these categories separately. Cost of living. There were four actions designed to bring relief with respect to the cost of living. I speak to these, to, to these as follows. Port charges have been reduced by 20%. Goods can now remain on the port for up to seven days before incurring port charges. Cabinet has approved the removal of custom duties and port charges on gifts, including barrels, valued up to $150. An amendment to the schedule in the VAT Act has been, has been prepared for approval at the next sitting of Parliament. In addition to rice, flour, sugar, milk, and other items used in the production of goods and services that do not attract any payment of that, government has considered some additional items for inclusion on the list of zero-rated VAT items. We are currently in discussion with the private sector to reach in a final decision. I call on consumers to look at the cumulative effect of all these measures on the cost of living rather than pick one of them and then to pronounce on its effect on reducing the cost of living. You will note that, a two, that two of the measures can only come into effect following the approval of Parliament. We take the people's business seriously, so we will spare no effort in ensuring that where it is necessary, the appropriate amendments will be, sought, will be brought before the Parliament. Creation of an employment agency. You may recall that the purpose for this agency is to, one, help persons find employment, two, pay an allowance for a period of up to six months to persons who, for more than three months, have been unable to find a job. Three, assist job seekers in acquiring skills 
that would make them employable. Cabinet has approved the, the establishment of an employment agency and has directed that a small business unit be merged into that agency so that economies of scale may be realized in the operation. The Ministry of Trade is currently engaged in finalizing staffing and operational arrangements and preparing budget estimates for the reconfigured unit. Minimum pay of $1,000 per month to full-time government employees. Detailed reviews of this measure by the establishment, personnel, and trading department have revealed that it appears only to governments non-established, it applies only to government non-established employees, since no employee within the permanent establishment receives less than $1,000 a month. The cabin has directed that the hourly rate of all non-established government employees be increased to a minimum of $5.77 per hour, with effect from April 1, 2010. As a result, no non-established worker who has worked, who works for only 40 hours per week, sorry, will henceforth receive less than $1,000 a month. To stick it again, as a result, no non-established worker who works 40 hours per week will henceforth receive less than $1,000 per month. The teaching profession. The cabinet has approved the creation of a total of 144 positions at the qualified and at the graduate teacher levels. The Ministry of Education and Human Resource Development and the Establishment Personnel and Training Department are currently engaged in finalizing the administrative arrangements for this to take effect. As appointments to these positions must be consistent with the public service regulations and procedures. Cabin has further directed that the training program for teachers be vigorously pursued so that the remaining 56 positions of qualified teachers can be filled at the earliest. The nursing profession. The purpose behind the creation of 100 new nursing positions was intended to fill gaps within the service that were critical for the optimal delivery of nursing care throughout the health system. The cabinet has now approved the creation of 100 new nursing positions. This should make it possible for those nurses who have successfully challenged the RENR to be appointed as level one or as staff nurses. This would go a long way in improving the effectiveness of delivery of nursing care throughout Dominica. Strengthening the police force. Maintaining the security of the state is of paramount importance to this government. In furtherance of this, cabinet has approved the creation of 50 new positions at the level of police constable. 35 of these positions will be filled in the current financial year and the selected recruits will begin training at the police training school at Monbrus. A second batch of recruits will commence training in the next financial year. This development comes on the heels of the provision of 30 positions at the rank of corporal. 20 of these positions have been filled with the remainder carded to be filled in the next financial year. Citizens should feel a greater sense of security in their homes, businesses, and communities as a result of the increased presence of police officers that will result from this measure. The fire and ambulance services have not escaped our attention. The cabinet has approved the establishment of a fire and ambulance station at St. Joseph. This station will become operational in the current financial year and Cabinet has already moved to facilitate this by approving the creation of an additional 11 positions of fire officers. Government, with the assistance of friendly governments, is continuing to acquire selected assets to assist in combating crime on land, sea, and cyberspace. For national security reasons, it is prudent not to provide details on this. In addition, work is progressing on crafting a program that will attempt to identify youth at risk of slipping into crime or antisocial behavior and steer them into directions that would encourage them to function as responsible, productive individuals. In support to our furniture manufacturers, we have instituted administrative arrangements that require any ministry or statutory body in the process of acquiring furniture to first approach local manufacturers before turning to other sources.